Hi there and welcome to the third in the series of 30 minute rows for 2022. Now today's workout is a max effort workout. How are we going to do this one? Well, we're going to start off with a nice gentle two minute row, do, 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 do. But then we're going to go one minute max. Okay, sprint high rate as fast as you can. Then we're going to go two minutes, nice and slow to recover, one minute fast. You can do all of this 10 times in total and that makes up your 30 minute row. So there's no real complicated pace guide here. All it is is that you do those two minutes, at, I don't know, run about 2K plus 25 to 30. You might find you're getting slower through the, the row. This is working out, run about three, four out of 10 maybe. Enough. You're just kind of you're moving okay you don't want to stop for those two minutes you're moving um, but the whole point being about that one minute fast 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 right so we're gonna do a four minute warm-up before we get into our main row you can of course warm up for longer if you need to don't follow just the four minutes just because I'm doing it if you need to warm up longer warm up longer right and we'll set up a machine first as we always do on the concept two that means setting the drag factor to where you want it to be if you don't know about drag factor please set it just between like four and five maybe and then you can have a look at the video I've got here on the channel talking to you about drag factor. If you're not at a concept two, just set your resistance so you get a nice feel from the stroke, but you don't have to heave against it with all your might. Next up, if you can, set your monitor to eye height and finally set those foot stretchers to a height where you're able to come in to the front of the stroke with your shins pointing vertically comfortably. Too high, that might be a little bit tough. Too low, you might find you go scooting straight past and the strap grabs into your toes. Okay, so this warm up, we're going to start around about 20 strokes a minute. And I just want you to think about enough of a push from your feet to connect to your hands. Maybe run about as though you're just standing up from a squat. Talking too long, let's get rowing. Okay, three, two, one, let's warm up. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing again with my big, hey, let's warm up. All right, so just push lightly with your feet and think about pushing with your feet at the same time your hands connect the handle to the machine. You don't want to push with your legs and miss that connection if you're pushing too soon and you also don't want to start grabbing too early with your handle. You want both to happen at the same time. And once you've got that connection close to what you think it should be, start to think about making sure you've got a forwards tilt of your back and then arms straight as you do that push. And that should help to put the power into the machine. Talking of power, let's just increase pace a little bit. If you've been doing some of my previous ones and you know what my usual pace for 20 strokes a minute is, that kind of five out of 10, as though you're walking up a continual flight of stairs. That's the effort you want to be putting in right now. If you've got a 2K training pace, that's right about 2K plus 18. And then this should help your body just open up, ease off, warm up, ready for today's main session. As being the main session starts with that two minutes easy, you can kind of use that as a extra kind of preparation for that first one minute sprint. And hopefully what you'll find is that you'll get faster first for those sprints as you get warmer. And then as you get through the row, you'll probably get slower. Okay, two more strokes. One more, and we'll put one foot on the ground. And continue rowing. Oh. So the point here is just, it helps you think about your positions of your arms and back because it's easier to get into that forwards tilt with just one leg strapped in than it is to have both. So just that lean forward, straight arms, push with your leg. Okay, let's swap feet. One in, one out, continue rowing. And again, don't worry too much if it takes you four or five seconds to do that swap over. You can lose a few seconds on these drills. It's not that important. Okay, three more here. And then we're gonna put both feet back in the straps. But you don't have to tighten them, just slot them back in. Legs straight, then roll with your back and arms. So you swing, rock your back from forwards, backwards, 
that's how you initially pick up the, the strain, if you want to call it that, of the handle, and then you pull. So, rock, pull, push, rock, rock, pull, push, rock. Push being pushing your hands away from you. One more here. Let's roll to the front, tighten your straps on the way, and then with straight arms on a forward lean, just press out from the front of the machine. Press. Not too powerful, okay? Because what I want you to do is concentrate on the forwards tilt and straight arms and that timing connection. So push and maintain that forwards tilt and straight arms. Right, let's just do two more. And finish with a full stroke. Ooh. So like I said, if you want to carry on warming up, please do pause the video and then keep on warming up um, so you're happy for the main row. And what I've been doing so far is going to continue where I'm going to go bloop, bloop, back to last year and you'll see the video of me rowing it back in 2021 and then I'll pop up at the end and we'll do the cool down and the stretching together. So make sure and go fast on those one minutes and then use the two minutes to recover in between and then go fast. Okay, right, I'll see you in about half an hour. So just to recap then, what we're doing today is going to do two minutes soft, one minute hard, two minutes off, one minute hard, over and over again for the 30 minutes. This session is about those one minute um, efforts. It's not about the two minutes recovery. So even if you're just kind of tickling the machine, that's okay. Um, ordinarily, this would be a kind of session where I'd say it's one minute hard and then two minutes rest where you stop completely. But because we're spreading this across a half hour row, this is how we're doing it that way, okay? So it'll be interesting to see. I've not done it this way for a long time, so it'll be interesting to see how I get on with this. Um, so we can all share at the end with each other and say how we got on in terms of pace. So, right, here we go then. So we're going to start off two minutes, nice and gentle, and then we're going to do that one minute hard. I will keep you right in terms of counting you into it, so don't worry if you've just got that half hour up on screen. But of course, it's two minutes, one minute, so hopefully we can all work out what's going on. You ready? Right, let's get going then in three, two, one, go. So, nice and soft to start. I'm gonna go 18 strokes a minute just to ease myself into it. But make sure that the pace is up at that 2K plus 20. Don't wanna go too soft on this first one. Like I say, this is almost like a continuation of the warm up to make sure that all of my gears are greased and running, ready for the first sprint. But then also, if you don't need to sprint from a stopped flywheel, sometimes this is a good idea not to, just because of the strain that it can put on you. I mean, from a training point of view, it's really important to do some uh, sprints from a stopped flywheel. But in today's session, you don't need to. So just to protect yourself against injury, that's why we're doing this two minutes first. And then we just roll straight into that sprint which is coming up in just over 30 seconds remember get the stroke rate up and push harder with your legs i'll talk technique after the first sprint let's just see how we got on with this first one okay then so in three, two, one. You ready? Here we go. So, stroke rate up. More of a push from your legs. Remember, this is meant to be a top intensity workout. Use this as practice for your top end. OK, 
keep that rate up and keep pushing 10 seconds to go Ooh. two more strokes for me right like I say we can back right off the pace let yourself recover Ooh, I've forgotten how long a minute can feel make sure to breathe and even if you are backing right off the pace here try to keep your technique relatively stable so forward lean arms straight and then push with the legs holding that forward lean and straight arms that's how you make sure to get the power into the machine which we're doing again in 25 seconds time oh that flew by there's two minutes okay you ready so in three two one here we go get the stroke crate up and try and think about your technique Ooh. I'm already easing off my pace a bit on these sprints this could well be because I'm quite tired after yesterday's row and then the Zwift bike ride so I'll be interested to find out what kind of pace you're able to hold 10 seconds to go 3 2 1 yeah I'm just feeling quite drained for this one if I hadn't already said 2k minus 5 I wouldn't be <laughs> aiming for it So make sure to use these recovery intervals to recover keep that pace down even if you end up 2k plus 35 or something just make sure To recover to be able to go hard on your next one minute effort which is coming up quite surprisingly soon 40 seconds remember it's quite easy to think about pulling harder on the handle to go faster from the front of the machine but try not to just hang off the handle as you push your feet into the machine 
That's how your power gets in. Okay. Three. Two. One. You ready? Here we go. Get that stroke rate up. And then push. Feel yourself hanging off the handle as your feet power into the machine and the force flows through your straight arms and into the handle oh, I think I'm going to have to settle for 2k pace for these three two one good job take your time to recover think about long flowing strokes take twice as long to recover as you do to drive so it's like one second drive two seconds recover keeping the muscles moving is a good idea in terms of blood flow and things but I would still much rather do this session with a full stop after each of the one minute efforts you can really notice my heart rate isn't recovering anywhere near as fast as it would if I was stopping okay 30 seconds to go until the next one it's tough old spicy minutes these ones aren't they which has been I just had a spicy chicken noodle soup it's getting a bit uncomfortable right three two one here we go again go I keep looking straight forwards as you drive into the machine a nice neutral chin will help keep your back slightly forwards as you push with your feet if you find you're looking at the ceiling as you drive chances are you're swinging your back too soon okay 10 seconds three two one Whoa. just remember I'm going to keep saying this this two minute interval is about recovery no heroics here but if you need to stop have a drink or whatever then please do more important that you're okay for these one minute 
efforts. I'm, as much as I'm joking about it, I'm quite surprised at how hard I'm finding it to hold my pace for these sprints. Certainly done this before with the dead stops and been able to hold 2k minus five. So it just shows how these active recoveries still take enough out of you. And is exactly why in my main training programs, I don't recommend doing light rowing in rest periods. Okay, next one's coming up. Our fifth one in three, two, one. You ready? Here we go. Get that stroke rate up. Even if you are needing to back off your pace. I want that just to be because you can't hold pace. You're not consciously thinking about slowing down. Because ideally you will be going faster than 2k pace. I've just ducked under by a second. Okay, three, two, one. Good job. That's us at the Bon Jovi point. Sing along with me. Whoa. We're halfway there. Ooh. This is a top max intensity workout. So, if you are not feeling the need for these recovery two minutes, then I would wager that you're not going hard enough on these one minute intervals. And if you're finding you can hardly hold on through these two minute rests, you're kind of going round about hard enough, <laughs> hard enough for those one minute intervals. I'm nudging 2k plus 40 for these recoveries now in order to have the power in me for the one minute intervals. They're the most important part, not these two minute recoveries. Okay, I'm gonna keep saying that. It's important you recover, but these intervals don't push the pace. Three, two, one. Here we go, push this pace, go. And if you can, continue to think about the sequencing of your stroke. Straight arms at the front and only pull at the back. Straight pull, push, pull, push, pull. Sometimes that's all you need to think is your feet and your arms, making sure you sequence them right. Push, pull, 
push, pull. Okay, 10 seconds. Four, three, two, one. Ooh. So if you are just going to simplify it by thinking push, pull, then just remember that as you push with the legs, you keep those arms straight and that forward lean as you push. It's only when your legs are halfway through the leg drive that you finally swing your body over your hips and then bend your elbows to pull in the handle. These recoveries or the low rate stuff that we do certainly is when you get a chance to slow down and think about that so you push pull push pull push pull and that pull is still important squeezes a bit of power into the stroke but also helps with your recovery into the next stroke which I'll talk about in the next rest I hope okay next one coming up in three two one you ready let's go now you should see it on the screen but I'm averaging between 30 and 32 strokes a minute for these one minute efforts which is round about my 2k pace actually or stroke rate so it's no surprise that I'm just holding my 2k pace so just shows how you increase the stroke rate from those 18 strokes a minute recoveries up to this sprint interval okay three two one back down to recover three more to go And here, get used to that pull of the arms, the tension that you create at the finish with your arms coming through. It's like a spring. So as you pull in, your body wants to bounce your arms back forwards again be it your muscles ligaments rib cage who knows but you use that natural rebound to get the handle away from you and that triggers your forward lean of your back then when you're in a good posture up on your sit bones you just tilt over your hips into that forward lean and then all you have to do is bend your knees once your hands are past them and you will effortlessly slide to the front of the machine so if you can think about getting those hands away and over your knees that is how you increase 
your stroke rate if you're not comfortable with it. Okay, in three, two, one. Here we go now. So really think about that handle away and a good posture and a lot of your stroke technique and angles will take care of itself so it's like two opposites at the front of the stroke you think about holding your arms straight and then at the back of this stroke as you recover you think about pushing them into that straight position ready for the next stroke okay three two one two more to go now it would be if this was a different format it would be interesting to see the individual splits for this row to see how pace fluctuates for each of the one minute intervals but also the two minute intervals just to see how they work in tandem so I'm definitely down at 2k plus 40 now to give myself enough latitude or energy I suppose let's not use <laughs> words that don't apply <laughs> capacity that's better for the one minute blast the good news is these one minute blasts are feeling shorter each time the better news is we've only got two more to do So make sure to hit both of these nice and hard and certainly the last one you should hit hard okay in three two one here we go And it's also worth thinking about your breathing how you're taking your breaths it may not matter whether you breathe in or out as you drive but what matters is that you find a rhythm that complements and works with your stroke so you're not just breathing ragged the whole time which to be fair I am because I'm talking to you right three two one okay last of the two minute recoveries I might say less in this final one so that I can properly go fast on it I do need to recognize the fact that talking to you 
through these is certainly playing quite a large factor in my cardio because I'm not able to get the breath in right so let's all finish the last one strong think about your technique remember to push with your legs and then pull at the back try and keep those arms straight if you see your elbows bending at the front of the stroke try to think about nice straight arms maybe even rotate your elbows outwards slightly that may help if you're a serial elbow bender <laughs> right last one coming up in three two one let's go now power come on that's better there's my 2k minus five push push pull thirty seconds come on twenty keep on keep it on stay strong ten seconds that's all that's left three two one well I'm happy that I proved to myself at the end that I am capable of rowing that hit 2k minus 5 after all the excuses and apologies <laughs> through that main session Whew, okay I hope you enjoyed that, that one as much as I did those one minutes get so tough by the end don't they so let's give it a second have a quick drink and then we'll get into a two minute cool down oh ah oh, there we go right so two minute cool down is going to be around about the same pace as the warm up uh, try and it should be probably faster than the two minutes easy you were just doing just to make sure and help your muscles flush out from those one minute intervals or one minute sections I can't even think okay so run about 20 strokes a minute in three two one let's go oh, I'll tell you what pace right so naturally I'm not looking at the monitor right now so yeah I'm running about 2k plus 30 so actually pretty much the pace I was doing the two minute easy at but that's naturally what my body wants to row at right now is a kind of what I figure is an easy row it's interesting sometimes to to cover your monitor not only just not only thinking cool down but say you were doing a 30 minute row at 18 or even 20 there'll be a 30 minute at 20 strokes a minute coming up soonish I assume can't remember all 30 to be honest and maybe when you do that cover the monitor so that all you can see is your stroke rate and the time elapsing don't worry about the pace cover that up so the concept too if you press the top right hand button then the very top row will be time and stroke rate so if you then put I know a sticker, a post-it, towel, something wrapped around the monitor to hide the lower part and then just row at what you think is like a 5 out of 10 effort for those 20 strokes a minute low intensity rows and then when you're done obviously take off the covering and see what you managed see what 
felt like it should be a low intensity row. And you might be surprised either at how fast you're going or more surprising is how slow, how much you actually, your body knows to back off. Last stroke in the cool down. But it's not your ego talking. It took me a long time, especially when I slowed down from illness and whatever. And my 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus 18 suddenly became 203. It took me a long time for my ego to reconcile rowing at two something, having always done uh, 158 or 159. So anyway, right. Stretching sequence next. If you don't have time to stretch, please at least take a moment to stretch your quads and your hamstrings, okay? Maybe your glutes as well. Not in the shower, don't want you to slip and fall over, but at least stretch them, okay? Especially after today's workout. Or, there he is, Stretchy John. He'll take you through some stretching, or I will take you through some stretching on the machine for if you don't have space around you. So, straps still loose, because you've just unstrapped them, so you should get a little bit of space between your feet and the foot plates and then toes back against the straps, put your hands on the air and fold your body forwards, okay? So you're folding your chest down towards your legs. You're not rounding your lower back or your upper back to do this. And what you'll find is right here in your hamstrings, you get a nice little stretchy sensation. If it's under your knees, you're not got it right. If it's nowhere, chances are you've got your knees bent too much. And if it's coming down your shins, then there's a good chance you've got your toes pointed forwards. So when I do this, it really puts the stretch into here. Then when I do that, it puts the stretch into my hamstrings instead. So, um, yeah, so that's what you do for that. So, uh, I get this right way around. Always the right way around, this way. <laughs> so glutes and hexa, oh, you think I'd remember. So put one leg up on the monorail, the other leg comes over so that your heel is in the crook of your knee. Bring this knee across your body so it's in line with your foot. Hold it in place with the other arm. Hold on to the back of the machine for, uh, just for stability. So you don't have to do that bit. And then rotate down into your glute. Okay, and spin down. And you should find, as long as you're holding this knee in line with your body, this is the kind of the key for the stretch, to be honest. And the rotation just helps. So you can just sit like this without the rotation you'll get a good, but that rotation down just adds a little bit of a stretch into the, you should just find that right in the meat of your backside, you get a lovely wee stretch in there. And after a row like today, with those one minute intervals where you're putting in like the full power, your glutes will probably have been on fire by the end. So this will be a good stretch. I've still got a dirty leg, oh dear. Right, so let's swap feet, same thing. Just the other way around. Oh, it's actually, it's not dirt. Um, if you don't know if you can see the mark on my calf, or my shin. Uh, that's not dirt, it's the, the kind of tattoo sticker things that I put on when making the Halloween zombie chase row. <laughs> that one's just not cleaning off. I've tried everything. I've tried nail varnish remover, I've tried, well, I've tried soap obviously first, but I've tried so many things and it's just not coming off. <laughs> I might try a Brillo pad. So let's get to quads next. So I like to stand up next to the monitor, rest the finger there just so I don't fall over. <laughs> Flick your heel up so that it touches your backside and then hold it in place with the other hand. And then just kind of give it a little bit of a, enough of a pull that you can feel the stretch into your quads, but not so much of a pull that you feel like you're uh, really wrenching against, okay? There's a, there's a real kind of fine line here. And then posture-wise, make sure and have a straight line between your shoulders, your hip and your knee. And that should really kind of get you right down here in the meat of your quad. Let's change legs. Let's see if I can do this one leg without falling over. Ta-da! He's a genius, says he as he falls over. But yeah, um, the other tip is to make sure and hold on to like the upper part of your foot. Just I keep saying this every day because I don't want to want to make sure and get this across rather than just gripping onto your toes because that can put too much of a stretch to your tendons, through your toes and things. You can end up actually uh, straining your your shin instead of stretching your quads. So that's just a, an interesting tip. Well, I find that interesting. Right, let's do hip flexors next. So I'm gonna do the knee on the ground one first. So knee on the ground, got a 90 degree bend. Front leg, I've got a 90 degree bend with the knee above the ankle. And then I just push that hip forwards while keeping, so you notice how nothing happens in my upper body. I keep it nice and straight, hopefully. <laughs> um, and it kind of push that forwards. And it really does get right up here in the hip flexor. Got a nice little stretch here. Um, which actually I was doing, uh, if you watched yesterday's video or the, the row twos video, you'll have uh, maybe heard me talking about doing high rocks training when I was doing a bunch of lunges and uh, wall balls and what else, burpee broad jumps and things. And my hip flexors really did take a beating from that because they're really sore today. So now the other version is, right, I've got to get the right leg right, yeah. So stand with your feet together, step forward with the leg you're not wanting to stretch 
and then up on your toe on your back or toes on your back leg, sink down. Okay, so you're not going to have full lunge onto this leg. You want more of the force to be on your back leg. And that should then give you a nice little stretch into your hip flexor. Remind me tomorrow to do this the other way around. Do this close enough to the machine that you can rest a finger on it again, <laughs> if you need to. But again, try and keep that posture right so that your, your weight distribution is relatively centralized rather than being forwards onto this leg or leaning backwards. So if I'm like this, I get a nice stretch with my hip flexor. If I move forwards, it suddenly becomes a lunge into that leg. Oh, what's, oh, my watch is telling me to stop that. Yes, I did say Okay, sorry about that, you didn't care about that. Watch was just buzzing at me saying, have you stopped rowing? I'm like, yes I have. So, uh, forearms next. So hands in front of your face, push them together, bring them down in front of your belly button, and then just keep on pushing your hands together. And you should find that underneath your forearms and in your fingers, you start to feel like you get a nice little stretch, just from pushing. And actually, do you? Yeah. There's some activation into your pecs as you do this, or mine. No, not really. I'm not like Maui from Moana, yeah, there we go, where he's dancing away with pecs. I'm not built like that. <laughs> Anyways, right, let's do shoulders. Uh, point straight to the camera, hey! And then bring your hand right in front of your, uh, across your body, sorry. Hold it in place with your other arm and then just kind of pull it slightly. Again, much like what I was talking about with the quads, is you want to just put enough of a force that you feel the stretch come in, but you're not trying to rip your, you're not a wookie, you're not trying to rip your shoulders out of your sockets. There you go, that can be the hashtag for the day, hashtag wookie or hashtag let the wookie win. So I realized someone actually commented on that, that I'd drop the hashtags for the first two of these swap arms for the first two of these rows. I completely forgot about them. In such a rush to kind of bookend these things, I decide that I forget some of my elements of branding. <laughs> um, most of my elements of branding are just talking rubbish, like the ripping your shoulders out from being a wookie. <laughs> okay, so. That's us done with shoulders, forearms. Let's move on to biceps. We're gonna be Eddie the Eagle Edwards, the ski jumper. Whoosh, but then he's gonna thumb a lift whoosh, by rotating your thumbs outwards. So your arms are behind you in that kind of ski jump position, but you've rotated your thumbs outwards and that then lengthens the long head of your bicep. That gives them a nice little stretch. But unfortunately, as you do this, what you, sh what you may find is that your, let's check in the mirror, oh, kind of, your triceps have contracted from doing so. So we'll stretch them next. So put a hand up in the air, swoop it down your back so it touches your spine. Then use your other hand to help your elbow back so that it's pointing directly up at the sky. And you should find your fingers come slightly further down your spine as well. Um, again, this is one of these ones where you kind of need to feel around for how far to push it back, whether you want to put any kind of upwards motion through your arm. That really does nothing for me for, for doing that, so that doesn't help me. And I don't really like hyperextending my joints. Swap arms, the same. Ugh. The only time I ever really think about that kind of elongating my joints is at, actually at the, I say I, I don't hyperextend my joints, but I do every single time I row, where as you come into the front of the machine, in fact, I'll finish this tricep stretch, then I'll show you what I'm on about. Um, it's a difference between coming into the front and just having your arms kind of like this or, or setting your shoulders forwards. See the, the, the length difference between just kind of having my shoulders back and straight, but then actually bringing them forwards. That's huge, not only for the amount of length that you get from it, but also from that kind of power transfer. I talk about the posterior chain when you push with your feet and it comes up through your body and into the machine. Then if your shoulders are set back, you're still kind of bracing and fighting against it. Whereas when your shoulders are forwards, that then just creates that beautiful long line through your tendons and ligaments and through your, through your body. So do think about that. If you're just kind of set back, even if you're tilting forwards, if you're set back with your shoulders, just think about releasing them forwards. Because look, that's me shrugging all the way back. Maybe, okay, and then look at the difference I get in length. And so that's huge. You think about all these people that finish with a handle up in their throat, trying to get like that much more length. You're much better to get that much more length from the front. So that, that difference. Okay, so you get that much more length from the front of the machine when your legs are powering into it and that power goes through rather than the difference between holding it here and holding it here, which is what? Well, I don't know, puppet. There you go, there you go. A, little bit, there a little bit of a take home rant at the end. So there we go, that was row three uh, of the 2022 um, 30 days of 30 minute rows. Like I say, you don't have to do all 30. You certainly don't have to do all 30 one after the other without any rests. It's entirely up to you how you do this. So um, I hope you're enjoying them anyway. It's gonna be variation, just keep on kind of basically going 
through these mid-intensity, mid high-intensity and low-intensity workouts, 30 minutes at a time. Uh, but then if you do do the th all 30, even if you take do like five, take two rest days, five, take two rest days, you're going to find you're going to get so much fitter, faster, stronger. Hence the t-shirt saying that uh, from just doing these. So it's really worthwhile doing all 30. So anyway, that's me. I'm pitching it at day three. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming along and doing this one. And for, of course, putting up with little old me. Uh, I will see you in row four. Until then, take care. Be well. Bye-bye.